where our coming and goings of frantic lives begin to compact the spirit of people to where when we hear the word of God, we're just not ready to receive it. They may not have any gross sin in their life. There's just simply no interest. There may not even be hostility towards God, but they're hardened with presumptions of what church is, the distortions of what his people do, maybe previous hurts from other churches. And it makes their heart hard. And they simply just have no interest in godly things. And the truth is, many of us here today were there at one point. Where there's a part, part of our life that we were just disinterested in whatever godly thing God was trying to plant in our lives. That people receive the truth, whether some conference or some event or some concert, and they hear about Christ and they, they love it, they enjoy it, but they never grow in their faith. And then when hard times come that they can't figure out, well, well God, I, I prayed to receive you as my Savior. Uh, why aren't you giving me everything I wish for? <laughs> Was that part of the conversation in any way, shape, or form? When you received the Lord, did he make you Lord and Savior? Where now we get to dictate to God what I want? <laughs> That's not scripture at all. It's he's Lord. He calls the shots. But oftentimes we get the roles reversed. And this is this shallow heart, this, this lack of understanding. And it usually boils down to possessions or position or power. And the heart makes some gestures toward God, but ultimately the distractions of the world draws them away. It's kind of the old saying that that we buy things we do not need to impress people we do not like with money that we do not have? Anybody ever been there? And Jesus says you can't serve two masters. You can't serve him and all the things of the world at the same time. This was the problem of the Jews. Throughout their whole history, always wanting something more. They needed the Mike Jones of whatever. And many of us at some point have been there in life. A life that is sold out to the Lord will have a characteristic of multiplying faith. Everybody needs love. Every human being that's ever drawn a breath on this planet needs love. Think about the person that you currently tell that you love. They have changed your life and you have changed their life. The words I love you is incredibly powerful. Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait for us to be religious. He didn't wait for us to be good. He didn't wait for any, do you know what we bring to the table of salvation? Nothing, nothing. Salvation is 100% a God-driven thing. And all you do is say yes or no.